The label of Nazi is one of the most common pejoratives in the Western political world. If we could define the insult, it'd be something like a person who has been seduced by authoritative power and racial essentialism, rendering them unable to think rationally about anything. The Wave, a German film released in 2008, poses a question to those who throw this insult around. The question being, if another radical movement began in your country, and your community began to not just accept it but celebrate it, would you have the strength to stand against it? Would you have the courage to stand alone with the mob breathing down your neck? The Wave has a lot to say about the origin of authoritarian movements and how they're able to absorb people who would initially be against them. It's a film that looks past the political aspect of autocracy and straight at the human nature aspect, which in my opinion is always the more effective approach, and the results are superb. The very first sentence of the film which plays through Rainer's radio is, I don't care about history. The line comes from the Ramones song Rock and Roll High School, and it's essentially a rebellious song about resisting authority, ignoring education, and embracing a life without responsibility. The song introduces the first reason why the wave will spread through the German high school like wildfire. The excessive increase of anything causes a reaction in the opposite direction. The students in this story are growing up in a secular materialist culture, a world of chaos. At the movie's first party, one of the characters literally declares that nothing means anything anymore, there's nothing to rebel against, we just want to have fun. These kids are just drifting along. They're free, but there's no direction. They were given the keys to a car, but no destination, so they aimlessly speed down the highway. It's a problem well described by Tyler Durden in Fight Club. We're the middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. In one of the story's best conversations, Carl tells her mother that her brother could use some of the discipline she's learning in class. And her mother responds with, he needs to learn his own limits. This is a hyper-individualistic culture where people are given the freedom to experiment and learn from their own mistakes. But the learning process has externalities, annoying externalities. The moral code guiding behavior is weak, and some of the students are excited to discover something sturdier. Now, from a political perspective, the classroom's temperature favors liberalism. The teacher and the architect of the wave wants to teach about anarchy and inequality, and his students want to rant about George W. Bush. Common sense would suggest that the students would be revolted by the idea of centralized authority running their lives, yet after getting just a small taste, they're addicted. But before they get that taste, the students believe that they're past authoritarian government and past the possibility of another Hitler. If anything, the story we're about to watch is trying to tell the audience that you can't get past anything engraved in human nature. We can't get past envy, we can't get past pride, and we can't get past tribal impulses. So to show his students the ever-present threat of autocracy, Rainer declares a class election, and by democratic choice, he is transformed into Herr Wenger, the head of the wave. Now at the beginning, the kids are just having fun. They just see it as a silly game, but then Wenger starts to lay out the wave's core values. The specific ideas behind Nazism were constantly evolving through the response of the German people. When Hitler said something that garnered a passionate reaction, he would repeat it going forward. Hitler even told Albert Speer that many of the ideas he laid out in Mein Kampf became, quote, invalid. So the ideas were arbitrary to a certain extent, although the scapegoating was essential. But at the heart of National Socialism and at the heart of the wave was the following overarching principle. Unity is power. The wave was based on an actual high school experiment that occurred in 1967, which was led by a teacher named Ron Jones. Ron Jones has said that when the students were asked to describe what the third wave was, which was the name of his movement, all they would say is, strength through unity. There was no platform, there was no tax policy. The movement fed upon the fundamental human desire to be a part of something bigger than yourself. Banger students had grown accustomed to competing against each other as individuals not just academically, but socially. The wave ends that competition. They're able to use each other to achieve a good grade, and those at the bottom of the social ladder are pulled up for the sake of the movement's cohesion. And we get to see how good this transformation makes some of the students feel. Lisa, for instance, is a girl in the class who wants to express her thoughts, but she's a little shy and has trouble articulating when her classmates are mocking her soft-spokenness. To get Lisa in sync with the tone of order and structure of the wave, 
Finger commands her to think about what you want to say, then say it concisely and confidently. She does as instructed and feels great about it. As the wave spreads throughout the school, Lisa becomes more and more confident because the hierarchy she felt she was at the bottom of has been flattened. Anyone wearing a white shirt is her equal. It's not hard to understand why that would make her very happy. Her classmate Tim has the identical experience, and his new feelings of empowerment are so intense that he burns any sign of individuality. If you watch Triumph of the Will, probably the most famous Nazi propaganda film, one of the Nazi ministers is giving a speech to the Hitler youth, and he tells them that, you are a youth that knows no classes or castes. It was primarily loyalty to the movement that determined your value, and loyalty is something that anyone can give. When Carl refuses to give her loyalty to the wave, Lisa is pleased to see her value crumble. Marco is another character who is taken by the movement, but for different reasons than Lisa and Tim. Marco begins the film at the top of the hierarchy, and his girlfriend is the main force trying to break the wave. He ignores her arguments because his family has been shattered by hedonistic culture. His father isn't in the picture, and the only look we get at his mother tells the entire story. She slept around a lot when she was younger, and then got pregnant with Marco. The father didn't want to stick around, and his mother continued her lifestyle. He has been raised in a state of chaos. The wave offers him order. The wave offers him people he can depend on, and he ends up choosing the wave over Caro because Caro's loyalty is not guaranteed. He's already afraid he's losing her. The wave also changes some of the side characters in unique ways. The director of the play, who used to be creatively pushed around by the actors, puts his foot down and establishes order on stage. It's almost like the members of the wave are beginning to be repulsed by chaos and try to establish order any way they can. This is also very helpful in team sports. Their water polo team starts to play better because the social hierarchy that had been dividing them has been eliminated. They have become a single unit, and they play like it. Caro and Mona's resistance to the wave is futile because they are vastly outnumbered by a group that has made organization and unity its primary value. So the power of conformity kills the chance of any counter-movement in its crib. The only one who can stop the wave is its founder, Banger. And despite getting a serotonin boost from the kids obeying his every command, he decides to do what's right and put his monster down. Now after the kids are taught that action is power, they start putting wave symbols everywhere. And the big question is, what does it mean? What ideas does the symbol ask the public to accept? Banger answers that question in the wave's first official rally. He comes out against income inequality and the rich getting richer, generic class warfare stuff. He chooses these topics because he knows the kids are sympathetic towards them and will match his energy. Once Wenger realizes that the kids are truly behind his leadership, he puts an end to the performance and attempts to kill the movement. In the true story, the ending isn't fatal. Some of the kids were psychologically involved, but not to a murderous point like we see from Tim. But it can get there. A good example is Frau Goebbels in Downfall. She kills herself and her children because she can't fathom a world without National Socialism. It became the sole purpose of her existence. The wave asks the viewer to look both inward at themselves and outwards towards their environment in search of despotic vulnerabilities, so I think it's worth doing a short analysis of the United States, the nation that myself and most of you live in. American culture is becoming more secular and materialistic. This has been the trend for some time now. Many of the Judeo-Christian values of times past are fading in favor of values shaped by individual taste. Some will say this is a positive development that encourages acceptance, but it certainly has done damage to religious communities, a source of order for billions of people. The nuclear family, which used to be the most important structure of American life, is also declining. Marco struggles with fatherless chaos in the wave, and it has become one of the most common struggles for youth in the Western world. From an economic perspective, the U.S. economy has become more complex over the past 60 years as we move to an information economy, which has caused wealth inequality to intensify. And even though living standards have gone up during this time, inequality almost always leads to social instability. So the vulnerabilities we see in the wave match up with the United States quite well. The question then becomes, can our new secular values and historical aversion to centralized authority fend off a movement that offers order, meaning, and a flattening of the economic playing field at the expense of personal freedom. The recent retreat to political and identity groups would suggest that we're headed in the wrong direction. 
But with that said, the founders blessed America with many checks on federal authority, so perhaps those will buy us enough time to find a healthy balance between chaos and order and turn the ship around. Whatever your beliefs about the future, The Wave is a great story for reminding people that we will always be just one generation away from tyranny. And just because we now scoff at those who joined authoritarian regimes doesn't mean we would have had the courage to resist them. The attractiveness of order cannot be underestimated when chaos is swirling around you. If you enjoyed this video, check out the analysis I made on Downfall. I talk about the attributes that made Hitler and other dictators of his time appealing to millions of people, and it plays well off the themes we discussed in this video. And remember to subscribe on your way out if you're interested in more videos like this going forward. Have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon.